God. There's going to be a lot, of, a lot of folks, man. They're going to be just onlookers, but then there are going to be those of us that are engaged. We're saying, I'm in there. Just throw me in there, God. I'm ready to go 100. All right. Let's shout it on the count of three. Let's send it around the world. One, two, three. Woo! Glory to God. Clap for the Lord. Man, you guys, you guys really do sound radical. Amen. I'm telling you, it sound like, man, you, you believe something. I know it's Jesus. Amen. I know that's what you believe. Praise God. Well, um, let's go ahead and pray. We'll get ready for the word. God's got a word for us tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing us, Lord, blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. Look at your name and say, get your Bible out. All right, well, uh, this is how we stay ahead of the enemy, amen? You know, you could be ahead of the devil and you could win. You could have won yesterday. But how many know? He's back at it today. Uh, You say, man, I put a whooping on him. I put a whooping on the devil yesterday. But, man, he got a good night's sleep, and now he's up at it again. Uh, uh, Amen? And so you got to do this every day. Now, this has got to be a way of life. Now, uh, we do this. We're word of life. We believe in coming to church. Um, We believe in putting the word out. That's why we put it online, so... I'm just waving at all of y'all that are at home. I'm happy you're tuned in. Just make sure you're ready because God has got a word for us and we've got to stay in tune, especially in the times that we're in now. Um, I titled this message tonight, Moving Forward. Moving Forward. And so it's time to move forward. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and say that. It's time to move forward. It, yeah, it, it's time to... Okay, let's say it together. Look at your name and say, it's time to move forward. All right, so that can apply to a lot of things. But, you know, it's time to move forward out of this turbulent season that we've been in. We've been in a turbulent season, you know. Uh, This year has been pretty rough up to this point. But it's time to move forward. And so we've got to be a people that understand this. You know, God's got greater in store for me. And it's time for me to move forward. Now, and you can apply this to any area of your life. This message will help you tonight. But we can't wait for things to get better. We can't wait for things to get better. We have to move forward by faith. Look at your name and say, you got to move forward by faith. Um, If people, if we were depending on everything to be just so, we would never get anywhere. And so we've had we've have to uh, make this decision within ourselves that we're going to move forward. Go to Philippians now. Philippians chapter three, Philippians chapter three. We're going to look here in verse 13. uh, Tonight. And, you know, this is a popular verse of scripture. I mean, well, you know, if you've been coming here, it seemed like every verse is popular because we go to so many different verses of scripture. But, you know, this is. A popular verse of scripture that is encouraging. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so if we just stop right there, he's saying, I'm not saying that I've got this all figured out. See, just because you decide to move forward by faith doesn't mean that you figured it out and that you're a know-it-all. You're just deciding that I'm not going to stay here. Amen. I, I know that God has something better for me. I'm not going to dwell on this current situation. And let's look at this and we'll really just dig into it tonight in the message translation. So we're going to look at Philippians 3, 12 through 21 in the message translation. And so make sure at home you're following along. You know, they put these scriptures up on your screen uh, for a reason. We want to make sure that everyone is, I don't want you to just get goosebumps. I want you to get the word. I want you to come out of church on Wednesday night with something to fight with, something that can help you have a better Thursday and Friday. 
you know, and also Saturday, Sunday, and we, we want to see you here strong on Sunday. Uh, what did I say? Thursday, Friday? Well, all them days. <laughs> I say, wait, those days, I think some blended together. <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> just, just let it run smooth. And so let's, let's dig into this. So verse 12, this is what Paul is saying. He says, I am not saying that I have this all together. How many of y'all would say that? Amen. Would you say that about yourself? Amen. I mean, it, and, and do you know that it's okay to say that? Yes. It's okay to say, hey, I don't have all this figured out. But I'm about to move forward. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I don't really have, I might not have all the tools I need. I might not have all the answers, but I got some faith and I'm going to move forward in that faith. And that's what God is really wanting us to get out of this. I'm not saying that I have all this, have this all together and that I have made it. That's another thing. I, I'm always telling you guys, we don't arrive. As a Christian, you should be looking to get better every day. You should be trying to get better every single day. You should never say, oh, I, I got this all figured out. Man, I'm just, man, I'm, I'm, my faith is so strong. Everything about me is, is on point. If you say that, that's when you're getting ready to get, you're going to have an encounter. Because you're putting yourself out there and we want to stay humble. Because if I'm humble before God, then God will pick me up and I get to walk in his power. And so I am uh, growing daily. I am being developed every single day. And so he's saying, I'm not saying I have all this together and that I have made it, but I am well on my way. Can you guys relate to this scripture? But I'm well on my way. See, those are words spoken in faith. You're not, you might not be where you want to be right now, but you ought to be able to say, well, I'm well on my way. I'm on my way there, but I'm well on my way, reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me. I'm going to do a lot of teaching in, in these verses of scripture. So you're reaching out to Christ, but think about this. You love him because he first loved you. So think about the one who reached out to you when you were in the worst place of your life. Amen. You were at the worst place of your life. He was reaching out to you, willing to take you as you were. Isn't that awesome? Because in this world, this world has so many standards and, you know, they want to size you up and all this stuff. Um, for the most part, you've got to have it all together before you get to be invited in. Amen. Um, most of the time you go for a job interview or something like that. What do you do? You want to be sharp, right? You want to put on your best stuff. What if you just showed up in there, man, the way Jesus found you? <laughs> Amen. Think about it. He reached down to us when we were at our worst because of his love for us. And so now we ought to be reaching unto him. See, you ought to be reaching unto God with every step that you're able to take. Next verse. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself as an expert in all of this. Now, Paul is emphasizing this, but now let me help you understand something very powerful here. He is not making excuses for our sin. So sometimes people think that, well, I don't want to sound like I'm perfect. Well, no, but that does not mean you have to call yourself a sinner. You don't have to call yourself a filthy sinner saved by grace. Paul wasn't doing that there, but he is still letting them know, hey, I'm, I'm still a work in progress. I don't have it all together, but he's letting it be known. I'm well on my way. I have moved forward. I'm going somewhere. Friends, don't get me wrong. Uh, back that up, please. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal. I've got my eye on the goal. Somebody say, Paul is looking at something. Man, see, when you're moving forward, you've got to look at something because if you don't have anything in your sights, you'll quit or you'll be derailed and you'll end up anywhere and you'll find yourself trying to get out of situations that God really never told you to go into anyway. Because how many know just because you left one situation going into another bad situation is still bad. 
You don't want to leave a bad situation and go into another bad one. That's what people do a lot of times. They go from bad situation to bad situation that the, their patience expires here. So they go to another one. Well, instead of getting what God wants, God has something great for you, but you've got to have your eye on it. You've got to know that God has greater in store for us. Next verse. Uh, let me see. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, stay right here. So let me see. Let me read that. Go on. Okay. So he says, I don't count myself an expert in all this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning, beckoning us onward to Jesus. God is calling us to Jesus. He says, I'm off and running. I'm not turning back. Man, that's a great way to live your Christianity. So let's keep focused. So I'm going to break down some points here as we read through this, but this one point we'll go back to is keep focus. So you might want to jot that down because we've got to deal with that. So let's keep focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything that God has for us. If any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll, you'll see it. Yet, so the, he's speaking by faith. You don't have the commitment yet, but God's going to clear up your vision, your blurred vision, so that, that you could see. Next verse. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. Stop right there. Another point for you to uh, mark down stay on the right track. We're going to deal with these things. I'm going to give you some points that we've got to go back and deal with through this teaching. So we've already talked about, well, we, we jotted it down, keep focused. Then now we've got stay on the right track. Now let's continue reading. Stick with me, friends. Keep track of those you see running this same course. Headed for the same goal. Now, back up real quick. This is an extra point that just the Holy Spirit just gave me. We need to deal with this, too. So you want to keep track of those who are running this same course. So just write down running the same course. Running the same course. And obviously, you know, they're headed for the same goal. Next verse. This is this is important, especially in the times that we're in now. There are many out there taking other paths. I want you to know that as a church, there are many out there taking other paths. They're taking paths that God didn't tell them to take. And they're going to try to entice you to take those paths, too. There are many out there taking other paths, choosing other goals. They've got other things they want to achieve. And trying to get you to go along. Y'all see this? That's what's going on in our world. That's what's going on in our society. That's what's going on with the media and all this. They are trying to get you to go down the same dark road that they're on. But I'm going to help you now. Somebody just say, help me, Pastor. See, I told you guys, I believe God gave me a mandate to shift the church's focus back to Jesus. And I know you guys love me and this is our church, but I'm telling you. Uh, the church world is not saying this as a whole. There are very few. I mean, there's like only a couple that are saying this, but I believe there's such a mandate. Uh, such a uh, uh, man, this is just so bodily important at this time that we keep the church focused on Jesus. Because this is one of those curves, man, you can go in there and spin out. And come out all messed up. There'd be a lot of people coming out of this all messed up. And so we want to stay on track. And so once again, I'll read this 18. There are many out there taking other paths, choosing other goals and trying to get you to go along with them. I've warned you. Did you see this? See, there's nothing new on the, under the sun. Same stuff was going on in Paul's day. Paul was trying to keep the church on track. He said, I've warned you of them many times. How many times has Pastor Troy warned you guys about the news through my years of preaching? I have warned you. I didn't warned you about the news. I didn't warned you about some 
them watered down fake Christians. I didn't warn you about even your relatives. Come on, somebody. I didn't warn you. And lately I've been warning you about the whole Black Lives Matter and all that stuff. I told you that ain't your movement. I didn't told you that, right? Didn't I say that? That ain't, that ain't your movement. Now, some of y'all start doing your research. You start finding out some stuff. You say, well, I didn't know all that. Well, you should have. You should have known before you jumped in there. Amen. And so he says, I've warned you of them many times. Next verse. Sadly, what? I'm having to do it again. I said, you know, I'm studying for this. I'm like, go ahead, Paul. I'm, man, I'm right there with you, man. I just feel, I feel you, Paul. I can feel you. Man, because I didn't warn some folks. You know, I didn't warn some folks. And, man, and they didn't listen. And so now we really just need to be shouting this out for the whole church to hear. Sadly, I'm having to do it again. And this is what's going on. All they want is easy street. See, people are deceived. They think that something's good for them when it's really bad. Well, they'll do it because it's easy. Right. You know, it's easier to do the wrong thing than it is to do the right thing. Did you know that? It's easier to cheat than to go the distance. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's not going to be rewarding, but it's easier. And guess what? You have more people going along that way. And so it feels comfortable for a season. Sadly, I'm having to do this again. All they want is easy street. They hate Christ's cross. Are we in this world today? Yes. They hate the cross of Jesus. Amen. They hate it, but they can't do nothing about it. I'm telling you, it's too late. It's already done. The payment has already been paid. But what the devil wants to try to do is distract you. He wants to distract you as the church. He wants to preoccupy your mind and to get you to back down off of your stance. Ah, oh, it doesn't have to be so serious. You don't have to be so radical. You don't have to be so rigid. He want, they, the devil wants you to back away. You see, because they hate Christ's cross. The cross of Jesus Christ is what they hate. But they cannot stop it. Now, what we have to do is say, you know what? I'm not going to allow myself to be deceived, tricked, bamboozled. Amen. Hoodwink. I've been warning you guys. Pay attention. You have the comforter. All right. And so that's the paracletos. That's the Holy Ghost. You have him. Now, he is your guide. He is the one that will tell you. You don't have to turn there, but John 14, 26, he says he's going to tell you everything you need to know. He's going to tell you everything that you need to know. And then we also have in Romans 8, I believe around 14, you know, if you belong to God, then his spirit is in you. But his spirit is going to lead you into all things. And so we have this what's what's called discernment. And if you would just listen, then now the Holy Spirit will illuminate your mind. So that now you could see through, uh, how many know, sometimes, remember that thing when uh, they say in the desert, it looks like a mirage. And somebody's, you know, man, they're dying of thirst and they see it and it looks good and then it's not there. They've been giving the world a bunch of mirages, man. They're trying to get you to track this way and come towards this and say, this is going to be good for you. Then you're going to get there and have a mouth full of sand. Have a mouthful of sand and you're going to be mad. But you know what God's going to do? He's going to tell you, I told you to listen to Pastor Troy. He told you to cut them people off all a long time ago. He told you to stick with me. See, I've been telling you guys this whole time. Just stick with Jesus. Stick with Jesus. Don't worry about what everybody Just stick with Jesus. Be in allegiance with God. Make sure that, hey, you know what? Vote. On God's side. You know what I'm saying? All people. Let's vote on God's side. That way we can have God's benefits coming to us instead of. Oh, man. Come on, somebody. I mean, if you eat a lump of coal, it's going to taste nasty. And you're going to have that nasty coal in your throat. I'm telling you that don't. I'm telling you right now, don't eat that. And if you do. 
Don't be coming to me complaining that you're over there choking. Because you've got to make, let the Holy Spirit be your guide. Not your emotions, not your, well, I grew up in this neighbor. I don't care about none of that. I want you to obey the Holy Spirit. And he will always lead you in the right path. And you won't be deceived. You won't be tricked. And we'll have greater victory coming for us. And so let me, let me continue here. So we know the world hates the cross of Jesus. And, you know, they want people want you to jump on easy street. But but easy street is a dead end street. Let me just pause right there. If you think it's easy, if it was easy, everybody be doing it. And so if, if it's that easy, it ain't worth nothing. And so you, that's that's why, you know, Christianity, Christianity that's made easy. is not worth anything. Christianity that doesn't require anything of you. It doesn't require a challenge. It doesn't require you to change your behavior. It doesn't require you to obey. Come on, somebody. How many know if you're not being challenged by the Holy Ghost to get your life in line, then that's probably not the best church. But easy street, a lot of people travel on easy street, don't they? A lot of people travel on Tickle Me Avenue. Amen. Come on. You know, rub my belly boulevard. You know what I mean? Hey, people like going on them places, man. I just felt so inspired. I felt inspired. You don't need to be inspired. You need to be convicted by the Holy Ghost. And then now you can get true inspiration from the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what we need. And so because Easy Street is a dead end street. Those who live there make their bellies their gods. Look at this. Belches are their praise. Look at that. And they can and they can think of uh, all they can think of is their appetite. So this is all about people in this for self, self gratification. What's going to please them? Um, you know what? I'm going to do it. Uh, you know what, Pastor? I'm, I'm I, I got you, man. I got your back as long as, you know, it don't cost me nothing. That ain't nothing. That don't mean nothing to God. What, what are you sacrificing for Jesus? You know what I'm saying? What are you sacrificing for Jesus? I mean, we can't live in this system of, you know, I just like it nice and easy. Well, that's not what the kingdom is all about. You've got to put some skin in the game. You've got to be willing to go the extra mile. And this is what Paul is saying here, uh, because if you don't, you'll be following these people who have uh, selfish motives in there. All they can think about is their appetites. They want to do what they want to do instead of what God wants them to do. But there's more, there's far more to life than us. Next point, write that down. So we're going to cover these. And I gave you an extra one. Somebody had to remind me because I didn't have it in my notes, but we're going to cover those points. But there, there's far more to life for us. Man, doesn't that, don't you just love the way that sounds? There is far more. Man, I have a lot that I am looking forward to. There's far more to life for us. We're citizens of high heaven. I've been telling you guys this. Don't get caught up in the cares of this life. We are citizens of high heaven. We're waiting the arrival of our Savior, the Master, Jesus Christ. Man, this is powerful. Next verse. Who will transform our earthly bodies into glorious bodies like his own. He'll make us beautiful and whole with the same powerful skill by which he is putting everything as it should be under and around him. So just so you know, God is in control. I told you on Sunday, God's in control. So he's working all this stuff out. No matter how it looks today, that's not how it's going to keep looking. Because God is working out something great. He is bringing change. And so what are we supposed to do as people is we're, we're moving forward. But how do we move forward? Well, we have these things that we must emphasize. So I told you to write down, keep focus, right? OK, so you have to keep your eyes focused. Now, let me know when you're not in focus. If you ever tried to focus something, whether it be, um, I don't know, what do we focus these days? Uh, a camera lens. Thank you. So a camera lens, if you don't get it right, it's very blurry. If it's so blurry, sometimes you cannot see what's really going on in that shot. 
There could be key details. Look at the name and say key details. There are key details that you will miss if you're not focused. If you don't focus, if you don't lock in and, you know, as we were looking at this scripture, we don't have to go back, but it said keep focus. Well, why is that important? Because there's always something trying to blur your vision. There's always something trying to shake you. There's always something trying to get you to see it through a tainted lens. Now, it could be there, but how I many know if you don't see it, you can't benefit from it. Amen. There is something right there, but you don't see it. Everybody else sees it. They get to go enjoy it while you over here running around lost. So you see why it's important for you to stay focused. You have to keep focused. And then now uh, we also cover the point there. Stay on the right track. I've been telling you, man, what is your track? Your track is to follow Jesus. Make sure you prioritize. Make sure you put God first. Make sure that you make decisions that are spirit led decisions, that you are doing this to please God, that you're on that track to please God, that you are not in this thing for selfish motives. So you have to evaluate the decisions that you make. Am I making this decision because it is a spirit led decision or is this Something that could possibly lead me on a different track. How I many know if you've ever been in a city where they have train tracks? So you got Chicago, they got the L train. Well, you know what? They got a, a control room where they flip those switches and those tracks switch. Do you know that just by a switch of the track, it could end you all the way on the other side of town? And you're lost now. You are almost there. Come on, some of y'all are almost there. You're almost there, almost there to what God has for you. Almost there to break through. But then now you got somebody in the control room over there working it. They're switching it. They're trying, click, 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 click. You got to stay on track. Because if you're not on the right track, then guess what? You'll end up in the wrong place. And I think this part of the scripture here even started to talk about pay attention to those. Oh, that was the extra point I said. The same race. Who got the point down? Anybody? Did you? Running the same course. OK, so we're on the same. You, you got to stay on, on the right track. But now running the same course. Now that text, that long scripture I read to you, it started to talk about pay attention to those that are around you. Didn't it say something like that? Pay attention to those that are around you who are running the same course, who have the same goal. They're trying to get to the same place. Do you know that not everyone is trying to get to where you are trying to get to? But they're trying to get you to run with them. But how I many know you might need to ask them, well, where are you going? You want me to run with you, but hold on, where are you going? No, you need to be with those that are running on the same course. Glory to God. We are on track to make it to heaven. And on our way, we're going to receive abundant blessings down here in the earth. And so I cannot jump over there and start running with you. Because you're running a different course that has a different prize at the end. I don't want that. I don't want that prize. But they don't. Have you pay attention? Why? Because as soon as you get on that wrong track, you don't know right away. Amen. I mean, no, if have you ever been in a car where you, you, you know, you thought, OK, my turn's coming up. Yeah, it's coming. And you say, man. Seemed like it should have came up by now. And. But you didn't really know, like there was no warning. There was nothing yelling at you. Hey, you're lost. You passed that up already. But you can get out there. Then you got to try to turn around. Well, see, what people are trying to do is pull you into something that God had no intention for you to go there. And now you're going to end up lost like they are. But it's a slow process. It's a slow process. See, a lot of people will... You know, you can try to tell them things. You can try to advise them. You can try to help them. But if you're not careful, they will be very persuasive and they'll start pulling you. Because you're not strong in what it is that you believe. And so 
I had the opportunity, I was telling my wife, I had the opportunity to talk to one of my old friends I used to do insurance business with. But man, we started talking about some people. And I used to be witnessing to those guys. And um, man, everybody's life is just falling apart. But yet I'm over here saying the same stuff. I've been saying, I said, oh, wow. I, didn't, I mean, we must, he must have named a good uh, three people, mutual friends that we had. They all got divorced. I said, wow, me and my wife about to celebrate 25 years. And, but I was saying the same stuff back then, see. But now they were trying to pull me on their track. They're trying to get me to run their course. Well, I don't want that. And that's what you have to do. You have to say, I don't want that. I am not going where they are going. And so now I'm going to pay attention to those who are running the same course with me. That's where you got to get the true yoke fellow. Y'all with me? Come on. How many know sometimes you got to watch out? You know, you got to like uh, do some spring cleaning on your friend group. Anybody here with me? You, uh, you know, well, but but, you know, but, you know, that's my cousin. Cut him off. Cut him. Come on, somebody, because your cousin will have you up in there lost like them. Some how many know sometimes you've got to communicate at a distance. Now, see, sometimes people, well, you know, you just don't communicate that much. I see. I don't have time. I'm so sorry. I don't have time because I got to protect what I got. I can't be calling up, calling you up and you talking all that mess. I'm not into it. Y'all with me? I'm serious. You know, I, I will spend my time to try to educate people. I try to, you know, voice things that will help them. I remember m me and my wife was back in, you know, Indiana with all my family. And, you know, they, they all love Obama. And I was trying to tell them, hey, y'all better look at the issues. And what about this? What about, you know, what about abortion? What about same-sex marriage? You know, what about uh, Israel? Oh, well, we don't know anything about all that. They just, you know, ah, da, 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 da. And me and my wife, we were like, wow, we, we kind of outnumbered out here. But how many know Elisha's servant thought he was outnumbered? Hey, but then God said, you know, they that are with you are more. He looked up and saw that chariots of fire surrounding them. And so when you have that kind of confidence, like there's no love lost, but I've got to have myself. I've got to be grounded enough in what I believe to go ahead and tell the truth and not worry about worry about if you offend it. I ain't, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I, I can't be caring about you being offended. All that stuff me and my wife was talking about in 08. Look at what happened. Now you watching me, you don't like me hearing it, but am I telling the truth? Look at what happened from 08 to now. And look what happened to go against the church from 08 to now. Man, people better realize this stuff. And so I'm, I'm not on that track. I'm going to heaven. And I'm going to please God. And I'm not one of them Christians that's talking about, well, uh, you know, I hope I get you. If you hoping you in the line, let me tell you something. If you in the line and you hoping like, Whoo, I think I, okay. Uh, whoo, yeah. Let me see how many more people. One, two, three. <laughs> Whoo, I'm coming. I'm number six. Okay. Uh, well, let me see. Okay. Lord, forget it's too late. You can't be repenting of no stuff when you're in the line. You got to have that together, man. You in the line and you talking about, woo. Yeah, I think when I was 12, I forgot to do. No, it's too late. I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to be in there like, hey, <laughs> yeah, come on. It's my turn. I can't wait to get up in there. I'm be excited because I've been living good. been living for God all, all this time. Not playing no games, not trying to make friends. Stand on the right course, right? But then also what you, what you're paying attention to those who are running with you. See, so I'm not saying that you can't have friends and you can't have any association with family members who are not saved. But you cannot let them influence you. Yeah. See what I'm saying? You've got to be the one because God's going to hold you to the higher standard. And so just make sure that you're aware of that. And so we said, keep focused. 
And then we say you got to stay on the right track. Look at your name and say the right track. Oh, there's many tracks to run on. Stay on the right one. I, didn't I tell you guys on Sunday, all this stuff's going to get old? You know, all this movement and all this stuff, it's going to all fade away. What's going to stick is Jesus. And so what's going to matter is what did you do with Jesus through all of this? Did you get a little closer to him? Are you stronger? Are you better now? You should be. And that, sh that should be your goal. And we also wanted to cover that other point. I gave you four points, but there's another one where it says there is far more to life for us. Think about this as a Christian, man. Do you realize that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could possibly ask or think according to the power that works in us. Matter of fact, if you can, just go ahead and put up Ephesians 3, uh, 20 in the uh, Amplified Classic. Let's dig into that for a minute because I've got to emphasize this. I mean, why would I turn away from my Christianity? Or why would I compromise my Christianity? Why would I do that? Why would I compromise now? Why would I take my Christianity and my Christian values and put them on the back burner and put social issues on the front burner? Y'all with me? Every social issue, just like every knee, must bow to Jesus. That's it. That's all that matters. Because I have so much more in store. Now to him, this is God, is now to him, uh, whom by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do, look at this verse, this next verse. Super, what does that mean to you? See, they're trying to get you to be upset. They're trying to get you to look, have a, the gray cloud over your head and doom and gloom and, oh man, all these things are going wrong. I told you it's time to move forward. Super abundantly, far over and above, all that we dare, man, I dare you to ask it. Y'all in here with me. Now, this is what we get to look forward to as Christians. Far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers. What is infinitely beyond your highest prayer? What is that? Can you, I mean, anybody in here with me? It, I mean, if you were not a Christian, wouldn't you want to, if somebody talk, start talking this, wouldn't you say, hey, hey can I sign up for that? Y'all got any more room left in that Christian thing? Because we're talking about he's able to do far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes or dreams. What's going on, man? You see why I'm telling you that there is far more to life for us? This is for us. But this is what we have to decide that we're going to believe and we're going to commit to this. So, man, how do I get to that? How do I get into those greater things? I've got to move forward. Look at your name and say, you're going to have to move forward. I'm telling you, that black cloud cannot track you. Last week, I, we was, you know, having some fun. I told you the angels be tracking you. Well, that black cloud can't track you like the angels will track you. So you know what? You could step away from the black cloud. Man, some of y'all right now, you can step away from the black cloud. You can step away from all this uh, depression and all this sorrow. You can step right away from it. You just have to decide that you're going to move forward. And how do we walk? We know this, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. You ought to have this as something that you live by. We are to walk by faith. Well, pastor, how can I move towards it if everything's not fixed yet? That's not faith. I mean, God is telling you take one step. And I'll, I'm prepping the next step, but I, I'm not going to even show it to you until you take the first step. Now, if you just keep putting your foot out there, he's going to keep putting down a stone for you to walk on. And he will get you there. 
He will cause you to arrive at the places of life that he has in store for you. But you've got to be one that says, I'm going to trust him and I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Now let's go over here to Hebrews 11 now. Hebrews 11, 8. We'll look at 8 through 10 through the message. By an act of faith, Abraham said yes to God's call to travel to an unknown place that he would be that would become his home. So by faith. And what is that? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But when you move forward, you have to be willing to move forward by faith. So by an act of faith, Abraham said yes to God's call to travel to an unknown place that uh, would become his home. When he left, he had no idea. Stop right there. So would we say he had to be walking by faith? That's like somebody tells you, um, when I call you, you have to leave. And you say, okay. But then now, aren't you going to be waiting for some directions? Where am I going to go? So he had no idea. It says when he left. Luke's your name say when he left. So this role was not paved. See, sometimes the things that God has for you in this life, you don't see them ahead of time. You don't see everything laid out. He might show you a glimpse, just something to keep you pushing. But there are steps that are going to come about. You're going to meet people along the way. Come on, somebody. There's divine appointments. There are people that you're going to meet that you'll never meet them if you don't start walking by faith. And they're actually on the path to where God wants you to be. But you got to take that step. Or you take another one. Then you're like, oh, wow, I met this person. Now, there was a person that you were scheduled to meet on step four. But if you didn't take step two, you'd have never met them. And they had resources for you. Oh, come on. Yeah, uh, man. They had stuff in store. They, they had. Listen, they were on assignment to help you fulfill your destiny. But you couldn't, you never got there. So you've got to move by faith. And this is what happened when he left. He had no idea where he was going. Man, this is powerful. Next verse. By an act of faith, he lived in the country, promised him, Lived as a stranger, camping in tents. And so what does this mean? He's walking towards promise, but it's not. Come on. Sometimes you step out there and you say, wait, things just got a little worse. You got to understand faith is working now. And so he's camping in tents. Him and Isaac and Jacob, they did the same thing, living under the same promise. Now, guess what's going on, though? They are not totally aware of what God is doing, but they know. See, they got their eyes on something. Look at your name and say, they see something. This is important. You've got to be able to, sometimes you got to sit down and ask yourself, well, what do you see? Because if you don't see anything, if that vision has gotten blurred, man, you, you need to recalibrate. And so he says, next verse, Abraham did it. How'd he do it? He did it by keeping his eye on an unseen city. So he kept his, he did it by keeping his eye on the unseen city. And once again, you might not see your promised land in the natural. Come on, church. You might not see it in the natural, especially in these times, man. This is also uh, this season, this season we've been in. That's why I said we got to move forward. This is a faith stealing season. This is a faith stilling season. This is a dream crushing season. All these things that are going on are sent from hell to steal your faith, to crush your dreams. Take away your optimism. God says, I've got big things in store for you. And he says here, Abraham did this by keeping his eye on an unseen city with real eternal foundation. So you might not see your promised land in the natural, but if you could see it by faith, how I many know you can keep pressing towards it? 
If you can see the better, do you believe that there's truly better in store for you? Do you truly believe that there's a better life? Come on, somebody. Anybody in here believe that there's a better life? You're at home. You believe there's a better life for you? Well, if you could see it by faith, that'll cause you to keep pressing. You'll keep pressing. You'll keep pressing towards it. But you've, you've got to be willing to say, Lord, show me something. Let me see this because Abraham, he saw the unseen city with real eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. This is what he saw. And now, in order to step into your future, how many of y'all want to move forward? In order to step into your future, you have to let go of the past. I mean, this is said so often, it's almost cliche, but this is one of the most powerful truths that you can ever uh, receive revelation of. I'm talking about let go. You've got it in order to step into your future. You have to let go of your past. And I'm going to show you the danger in this. Go to Hebrews 11:15 Now Hebrews 11:15 in the um, King James. And, and this is talking about the, the people that God was bringing out of, of one place and getting ready to take you into somewhere else. But he says, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out. Now, it's OK to have a testimony. But you got to move forward. Right. Amen. And I'm going to show you this. We'll break it down here. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity. What? Yeah. To have returned. So why do people find themselves in cycles? They keep going through the same stuff, the same uh, problems, the same relationship problems, the same. All this stuff keeps coming back because they're still mindful. They're mindful of where they came from. Well, you've got to cut that off. And because in order to step into your future, you got to let go of your past. So what this is really teaching us is that old mindsets contaminate new opportunities. Old mindsets contaminate New opportunities. It's not going to come forward. It's not going to manifest for you because you've got that old mindset. You've got preconceived things based on the old and you've got to let that go. Get rid of that old mindset. And man, we've got to just really receive instruction on this because once again, it's OK to have a testimony. But there are a lot of Christians, a lot of people dwell on stuff. And the old stuff is still coming up in the new conversation. And God is saying, I can't take you into the promised land because you still got dead bones. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to drag dead bones into the land of the living. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I'm not going to allow you to bring those dead bones in there. And so people go from problem to problem, uh, relationship to relationship, job to job, situation to situation. Why? Because they're dragging a bag of dead bones. God says, I've got new for you. But in order for you to step into the new. Man. Come on. Cut it loose, man. Amen. Amen. Cut it loose. You got to cut loose of the past. This goes for success and failure. Because oftentimes people live in the past successes. Well, you know what? I did this. I did that. But what are you doing now? God has something greater in store for you. So those accolades and all those things you achieved in the years gone by really don't matter today. What matters is what's up ahead. What does God have in store for you? And so old mindsets, once again, get rid of them because they will contaminate new opportunities. That's why a lot of people are stuck in ruts today. You know, even when we're dealing with this uh, racism and all this stuff that's going on right now, a lot of that's... Um, it's, it's uh, developed through old mindsets. And so because they're old mindsets, they have old expectations. And God has come to renew your mind. He's come to give you a fresh outlook. And you know what? Two people can see things totally different. Amen. Two people can see things totally different. There could be one person in a car driving and another person in the car driving. And the police are behind them and they could interpret that in different ways. 
One could say, not even think about it. I'm fine. Another one could get nervous and start, oh, man, I better make sure. But it's, amen? Perception is reality. But perception is oftentimes influenced by your experience. And God is trying to give us a new experience. He's trying to give us, he's trying to introduce us to kingdom living. And he's letting you know that the things that you've experienced in the past will not prepare you for this. See, we live in a, a world that teaches you to study to prep for your next promotion. Well, your next promotion in the kingdom can't be studied for. Can I get an amen right there? I'm just telling you that your next promotion in the kingdom can't even be studied for. There is no studying for this. And so God is wanting you to, by faith, be ready. Oh, Lord, you're increasing me. God's increasing my capacity. He's increasing my ability to receive because I'm I'm getting ready for a kingdom promotion. And really, I don't have any reference points, so I don't have anything to look back on that would prepare me for this. But I can receive it by faith. Y'all with me? So Isaiah 43, 18, message translation. OK, so forget about what's happened. Now, I would, if I were you, I would write a note on that one. Now, you, I want you to apply that to your life because the devil will have you thinking about some old stuff. And you need to say, forget about it. Well, you know, we learn from our mistakes and no, we're, we're talking about faith now. We're not talking about the old system and the old way of doing things. We're talking about supernatural increase. I'm talking about Lord I'm not going to have any breaks on me because of my past experiences. I'm just ready to go 100 with you. And so forget about what's happened. Look at this. Y'all see this? Is this good instruction for you? Don't keep going over old history. You've got to stop that. We've got to stop that. I have to stop this. This is God spoke to me on this as a pastor. I've got to stop talking about what has happened in this church in the past. I mean, I, I received um, swift correction from the Holy Ghost through preparation of this message. I've got to, I can't, I got to let all that go. I can't talk. It don't mean nothing. What's that doing for me now? I got to let all that go. It ought not be at the forefront of my mind because the things that come out of your mouth are typically at the forefront of your mind. And so if they're at the forefront of your mind, they've been up there doing damage before they come out your mouth. So the forefront of your mind is being damaged by these negative thoughts. And then some of them slip out of your mouth. And so we've got to forget about it. Look at your name and say, forget about it. Man, I'm going to let all that stuff go. Don't keep going over old history. Now let's get ready to close. Let's look at the same uh, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 in the NLT. We'll close there. So he says, but forget all that. So now I, I, I challenge you and you at home as well. You can put all you want in that bag of all that. Amen. Forget all that. And so when the enemy tries to bring up stuff and, you know, how many of y'all have had some past failures? Anybody in here with me? You've had some disappointments. Maybe some things didn't turn out the way you thought they should. Maybe you've experienced, anybody in here experienced delay? What God is saying tonight is forget all that. Put it all in that bag and forget about all of it. Why? Because it is nothing compared to what, oh, man, I'm up in here getting, what? Is it, it is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. Do you see why you got to forget it? Because you don't have the compass. See, we say, well, okay, based on my experience, that ain't enough, man. I'm telling you, we're entering into supernatural advancement. We're entering into supernatural promotion, supernatural things coming forth that you in the natural are not prepared for. But by faith. So I'm going to let go. I'm going to tell you, it's like 
having on, you know, it's trying to run a race and you got all ankle weights. You, know, you might want to take those off. Well, I'm, but I'm pretty strong. Yeah, but you're slow. I mean, you're strong, but you're slow. Saying, everybody, you coming in last, man. Take those off. Amen? So you can move forward. But forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. Next verse. For I'm about to do something new. Y'all ready for this? Yes. See, it's not going to be the old way that you thought. God is doing something totally new. And we've got to be open. We've got to be a blank canvas now. I believe it's time for us to be a blank canvas and, and not lean on traditions and things and structures that we've had. We've got to be wide open for what God might do next. For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. This is God showing you that I'm about to do something supernatural in your life. I believe that. I believe that for word of life. I believe that God's about to do something new that we've yet even considered. But the question is, will we be ready to receive it by faith? Well, how do I make sure, and, and this is going to happen for your families, but how do you make sure that you're in position? I'll leave you with this. You've got to keep focused, or, or you can look at it as stay focused. Don't let anybody cause you to get off and, and start looking at the wrong things. Stay on the right track. Don't just run any race. Run the right race. And then also pay attention who's running that course with you. Make sure you know who, pay attention to that friend group that you have. If you got to scale it down, so be it. And then always be filled with this optimism, knowing that there is far more to this life for us. Amen. The best is truly yet ahead for those of us who will stay in faith. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Amen. Praise God. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for being here with us and ministering to us in a very personal way. I thank you for that. I know that this word is penetrating our hearts and preparing us for greater. Thank you for that, Lord. I pray if you're at home right now and, and maybe you don't know Jesus as Lord, we want you to know that victory starts with that decision. You just choosing Jesus as Lord. So I'm just inviting you to come into this family. So church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who would hear this message, they will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, amen. Praise God. All right, God is keeping us, amen.